Uh, so I found out today was the 10th anniversary of Speed Racer, which also means it's the 10th anniversary of Iron Man and about to be the 10th anniversary of me graduating from college, all of which freaks me out. Um, so I didn't see Speed Racer in theaters because I was poor and graduating from college and I had to make snap decisions about what movies to watch. I couldn't see all the movies like I do now. And so I saw Iron Man. Um, however, like most of America, I saw Iron Man. And, um, you know, when they released Speed Racer against Iron Man and these movies were coming out all at the same time, no one knew that, like, Iron Man was the beginning of this. Well, the people who planned it knew, but, you know, the rest of us didn't really know that Iron Man was going to change everything about the movie-going landscape and that Marvel was going to completely dominate. We didn't really know that. This was a gamble, and it happened, and we should, you know, and it, you know, derailed everything else and then has for the last 10 years. So cut to Speed Racer. Obviously, um, this film had been in develop development for a very long time before it wound up in the hands of the Wachowskis after they finished the Matrix trilogy. Um, I remember there was some trepidation because the film obviously is based on uh, a Japanese um, anime and the uh, main character in this film is played by Emile Hirsch. He is not Japanese. Um, neither is Christina Ricci, nor are Susan Sarandon and John Goodman. Um, but what I will say, despite that, it is um, one of the most diverse cast I've ever seen, let alone in a giant big budget film. Um, so that's, that's fascinating um, in and of itself. It was shot in and around Berlin and Potsdam and um, is one of the biggest CGI fests you will ever see. Um, I believe it got very bad reviews and a lot of it were too much CGI, although <laughs> if only those critics saw movies now, right? Um, and two, um, that it, uh, it was style over substance and that it didn't really... Uh, build rich characterizations. Now I have a couple of like thoughts on this. One, it it really is a live action cartoon. And I don't know that we've ever had a live action cartoon film actually be beloved um, when they really go full cartoon. I'm thinking, um, you know, the Moody Jones back in action and the Rocky and Bullwinkle and some of these others that just what you can do as an animation, people accept in a way that they won't accept when it's live action. I think that was a step away from this film. Um, but I, I, found it fa I found it fascinating and it's so beautiful that I didn't really care that I didn't know much about the family other than what is presented to me. But also, um, it is in such a fake cartoon world that you don't really need developed characters. Um, it's not like something like the Wachowski's Cloud Atlas, which is a, another completely new different world, or obviously the Matrix. Completely different world from our own, but what whole and um, could be real, right? Speed Racer is not real. It could never be real. Just look at the crazy racing um roots that they're on and you're like this is not reality at all not include not even like an, an alternate type of reality so I, f I don't feel like it needs to have um true characterization in a, in any way um beyond what it does that said there are realistic wonderful moments within the family dynamic but also with some of the side characters where there's moments and then there's moments, um, I don't, I don't want to spoil some of the twists, but there's moments with side characters where one character does something and then another character finds out later. And, and then there's a moment between the two of them that feels very real. Um, so there's enough in there if you're, if you're really paying attention to ground it in reality. Uh, but then you get this amazing uh, camera work and fluidity of the way that they cut from this person to that person and then use like, like, I don't know the proper term right now, but those those slam cuts where it's like, boom, but there's like a penguin doing it and then like a person's head. And it's just, I, I feel like the storyboarding for this must have been immense. Um, 
and it's just it's just so much fun to watch. And I'm usually not a big sort of sports or, or car person, and I was enthralled by these races. And I I am very much not a gamer. I'm terrible at playing video games. Um, but if watching video games were as fun as this looked, I would maybe watch video games. But I don't like watching people play video games. I like watching what would be a video game, if that makes sense, in this case. Um, not in every case. In this case, it was beautiful and, and stirring and um, sucked me in through its amazing editing. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, I would have liked Christina Ricci to get a little bit more time in her copter, but, you know, you win some, you use some, and a little bit less with the younger brother and the chimp. I didn't like that. But I didn't like that in the original Speed Racer um, show either, so, you know. I liked the dyma dynamic of John Goodman and Susan Sarandon with Emile Hirsch's character and the way that they um, guided him. And it's a very sort of childlike view of what parents are like. I think that's okay because that's the point. Um, I also really liked Matthew Fox in the handful of moments that he's in. This was like at the height of, of his lost fame and he is like super hot in this movie. So... A plus on that. Um, beautiful primary, use of primary colors, all the pinks and the purples and the greens. Ooh, I loved it. Um, great evil villain. Great evil villain. Sort of, sort of a, a cartoon version of a Bond villain. Like it worked. I liked it. Um, let's see. Richard Roundtree shows up in it. Um, I liked that it felt like it had a history because they show sort of 50 years ago uh, film footage that was in black and white as if uh, just like in our history 50 years ago everything was in black and white. Although 50 years ago everything was in color because it was the 60s. Think about that. But like, you know, 60 years ago, whatever, 40s were in black and white. Um, let's see. What else did I like about it? There was one other thing I thought was really – interesting oh this is not necessarily a commentary on the film but the oeuvre of the Wachowskis in general uh, is how everything that they've made including if you look at it found is about who has money who 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 does who does what for money um the way in which money corrupts people and the way in which doing things out of pure passion is the um, right, straight and narrow path over over money and over um, the power that comes with money because the power of, of joy and creation and art is so much more important and love. Um, but what's fascinating is that aside from Bound, which was sort of a, a mid-level budget thriller, um, all of their films have been these huge, big-budget spectacles that are also anti-capitalist. I find that fascinating, um, in particular with Speed Racer, because apparently there were 5,000 different licensed objects sold to tie in to this film that is very much about anti-capitalism and, and, and small family-run businesses. <laughs> and obviously, like, the Wachowskis must have gotten, like, a cut of some of that, hopefully. Um, but, like... They're making this film that's so anti-big industry while working within a big industry. I don't know. There's there's something there. Um, so anyways, I enjoyed this film. Um, I'm glad that I waited to watch it now. I don't know that I would have liked it as much 10 years ago. Although I really, this was the other thing I wanted to say, I really do kind of want to see it in theaters um, because I imagine, one, the eye-popping visuals will like blow me away, but two, the sound design is so great and and I'm sure the like zooms and things like that like hearing that in a theater would be a visceral treat so um I kind of regret not seeing it for that reason but anyways this is Speed Racer it is from 1998 no it's from 2008 it is celebrating its 10 year anniversary today and you can watch it on Netflix um it's had many 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 developers, but this iteration was written and directed and produced by the Wachowskis. 
And I believe now I've seen all of their films, so that's exciting. Um, and they, I need to catch up on Sense8, though I have not watched that. Um, they need to make another film. I, of, of all the filmmakers that can get $100 million budgets, uh, I trust them implicitly to make something that I will enjoy, and so I want them to have another $100 million budget so that I can enjoy their art because I always love it. So this is Speed Racer 2008. Watch it on Netflix.